The war against AIDS is the mother of all wars. We tend to think that AIDS will infect others, but not us. Each of us has that responsibility to protect ourselves. The African Union has yet to acknowledge that this brain drain is an immense decapitalization of Africa, the largest global scale surrounder since the establishment of the Atlantic slave trade, which uprooted and scattered the sons and daughters of Africa to the United States, Brazil, and Jamaica. The flight of intellectual capital from Africa is steering the continent toward a path of self-destruction and decimation beyond the imagination of the greatest fiction and horror writers. This brain drained Africa will soon run dry, empty of the intellectual capital required to maintain political stability, increase economic productivity, and reduce poverty. This reduction in intellectual capital is leading Africa to commit suicide as manifested during the two decade war in Sudan and the genocidal killings in Rwanda. One third of Africa is directly or indirectly affected by war. The war in Biafra, a breakaway country now renamed Nigeria, where I was a refugee, a child soldier, and a child laborer claimed one million lives. The war in Sudan claimed two million lives. The wars in Ethiopia, Somalia, Uganda, and Liberia claimed countless young lives. These are the intellectual future of Africa. We are killing our own future. Those who are not killed flee in fear. Most educated Sudanese have permanently fled their war-torn motherland. Each time I have heard Dr. Emerwali speak on the few occasions since he has been here, and I don't know whether protocol allows this, but I have to make the point that I see so much resemblance and similarity to the, our guest speaker of three years ago, Dr. Ben Carson. And the thing that came out very forcibly to me was the extent to which we are all of these great men. And I wouldn't know anything about that, so I have to listen to what they tell me. All these great men had to struggle. They came up through difficult times. They had to have the determination and the drive to succeed. There was always the parents in the background. And I want to say to you that in the case of Dr. Philip Emewale and his dear wife, who in her own right is a professor at the university, I see so much similarities. And I only say that we in turn have to make sure that we continue to do all the things that will make us great. One of the great minds of the information age is a Nigerian American named Philip Imigwali. He had to leave school because his parents couldn't pay the fees. He lived in a refugee camp during the Civil War. He won a scholarship to university and went on to invent a formula that let computers make 3.1 billion calculations per second. Some people call him the Bill Gates of Africa. <laughs> but what I want to say to you is, There is another Philip Imigwali, or hundreds of them, or thousands of them, growing up in Nigeria today. I thought about it when I was driving in from the airport and then driving around to my appointments, looking into the faces of children. You never know what the
potential that's in their mind and in their heart. What imagination they have. What they have already thought of and dreamed of that may be locked in because they don't have the means to take it out. That's really what education is. It's our responsibility to make sure all your children have the chance to live their dream. 